The game has a pretty good getting to orbit tutorial. I particularly like their missing the ground video, which does get to the main idea of how an orbit works. But the tutorials hardly cover everything and in fact miss a couple of essential details. Getting to orbit is a big hurdle in this game. This video is here to not only fill in the gaps left by the game tutorials, but to level up the launch skills presented in those tutorials, helping you get to orbit more reliably and efficiently. Let's get started. In this video, I'm going to use the Kerbal K1 that comes pre-built with the game. The rocket was designed to easily make orbit and after a bit of practice, you'll find that it can also get to orbits of either the moon or Mimis and safely return to Kerbin. It already takes into account most of the principles that make up a stable rocket, but there is one it is neglecting. If I open the engineer's report, you can see it has a launch thrust to weight of 3.654. This is too high. The first thing that should be done to bring it down is to move the Methalox swivel engine into the second stage, leaving just the hammer SRBs for launch. You may have even noticed that this gives a small increase to the delta V of the rocket, but more importantly, the thrust to weight has come down. And I'm going to lower it even further by tweaking down the thrust limiter on the SRBs. You should find this makes the rocket easier to control. One last thing, the rocket does not have a heat shield under the command capsule. At the time of this video, the game doesn't model atmospheric heating, but that is sure to change at some point, so I'm going to add a heat shield under here. But with that done, let's launch. The tutorial has you ascending straight up until you reach an altitude of 10 kilometers, and then pitching hard to the east, that is a heading of 90 degrees but it skips an important thing to look for. As you ascend, watch your apoapsis in the orbital information at the bottom left of your screen. This is the highest point of your current trajectory. Be ready to cut throttle when the apoapsis reaches the altitude of your desired orbit. Technically, anything over 70 kilometers will do for an orbit. For this tutorial, I'm going to go for a 100 kilometer circular orbit. That means I should press X to cut my throttle when my apoapsis hits 100,000 meters. With that down, we can move on to the next level. Instead of using map view to judge how close you are to apoapsis, use the time to apoapsis provided with the orbital information. You are going to want to perform the orbital insertion before this gets to zero. How much before depends upon how much you need to increase your speed to achieve an orbit. The speed required for an orbit varies with altitude, but a good number to remember is that you need a speed of about 2,250 meters per second for a 100 kilometer circular orbit. This speed will be a bit less higher up and a bit more lower down, but remembering 2,250 meters per second will give you an idea of how much speed you need to add during the insertion burn. The more speed you need to add, the earlier you should start your burn. If you're new, I would strongly recommend quick saving well before starting the insertion burn so that if things go wrong, you can revert and try again. Here, I'm going to start 30 seconds before apoapsis. I'll continue burning until my periapsis gets to 100 kilometers, at which point I have the orbit that I want. But that isn't the only number I'm watching. I'm also still watching my time to apoapsis. If that number stops counting down to zero, reduce your throttle or cut it completely and let that number get lower before starting up again. The idea is for this time to reach zero just as you're completing your orbital insertion. If you don't pay attention to this, you will likely find that your apoapsis will begin increasing dramatically, not only wasting fuel, but also spoiling your orbit. If the time to apoapsis passes zero before you reach the necessary periapsis, then you started your insertion burn too late or didn't have enough throttle. Revert back to the quick save I suggested that you do and try again. Once you feel you have this down, you are ready for level three. The tutorial doesn't have you start your gravity turn until an altitude of 10 kilometers, but it does mention that as you gain experience, you will want to start it earlier. 
Personally, I start my gravity turn once my rocket exceeds a speed of 50 meters per second, though some prefer to begin a bit later, especially with less stable rockets. The lower thrust to weight ratio that I mentioned earlier in this video makes this maneuver easier to do smoothly. Pitch over only about 5 degrees or so at the start, and don't be at a pitch lower than 45 degrees when you cross an altitude of 10 kilometers. That green circle on the nav ball is the prograde vector, which marks the direction your rocket is currently going. For greater efficiency, stay as close to the prograde vector as you can. Once you can do this without much difficulty, you are ready for level 4. As mentioned, it's best to stay as close to the prograde vector as you can. The further off your rocket is from prograde, the more it is going through the air at an angle, which increases drag, slows your rocket, and wastes fuel. As such, the best ascent will have you lock right onto the prograde vector. After initiating your gravity turn, try locking the rocket to the prograde vector. Try to minimize your use of the WASD keys. You may require some taps on W and S to steer your rocket onto a 90 degree heading, but once you're going due east, leave it alone as much as you can. You should find your rocket naturally pitching over all by itself. In fact, a well-balanced rocket should do this even without having SAS on. Once again, the reduction of the launch thrust to weight shown earlier in this video will help. Watch the rate at which you are pitching over. Remember, when you are at an altitude of 10 kilometers, you don't want to be below a pitch of 45 degrees. Some taps on the A and D keys can adjust for this, though it's best to make the adjustments well before getting to the 10 kilometer altitude. Don't worry about being perfect, and it is better to ascend too steeply than too shallow. It's when you are too shallow that you start running into drag issues. If you find that you are pitching over too quickly, try locking to your current heading for a while. That will slow the rate at which you are pitching over. You can then lock back to prograde when you are happy with it again. Don't be afraid to revert to launch and practice, but once you feel you've got it, head on to level 5. I previously mentioned that it's better to ascend too steeply than too shallow. This is especially true if you employ this technique, reducing your throttle in the upper atmosphere. As you ascend, keep an eye on your time to apoapsis. Once it is around 45 seconds or so, begin reducing throttle with the goal of keeping your time to apoapsis close to constant. If the time increases, reduce throttle a little bit more, and increase throttle a bit if the time drops. At the release of this video, the throttle controls are very twitchy, and you may find it easier to grab and control the throttle with your mouse. You will find that, in order to keep your time to apoapsis constant as you ascend, you will continue to reduce your throttle bit by bit. Keep watching for staging events, especially ones where you stage to a lower thrust engine, as you will likely need to increase throttle to compensate. Note, a lower thrust, high efficiency, upper stage engine is good rocket design and is a common feature of real world rockets too. Now this does make the launch take longer. Though this gives you more time to enjoy the views, some folks just want to get this over with, which is fair enough. You can sacrifice some fuel savings by simply stopping the process of reducing your throttle and letting your apoapsis climb to the required altitude more quickly. However, if you continue with the throttle reduction, you will find that when you reach space, you will be rewarded by already being very close to the required orbital velocity, with an almost trivial final insertion burn, which makes it pretty easy to get an accurate orbit. This method may sometimes have you losing height on your apoapsis after you have cut throttle. No problem, once at a higher altitude, just burn a bit prograde to bring your apoapsis back up to where you want it. If you find this happening regularly, try ascending more steeply earlier in your launch or reducing your throttle for a longer period of time during ascent to keep your apoapsis from reaching its target before you are in the upper reaches of the atmosphere or even space itself. And that's it. If you are struggling with getting to orbit, try practicing the techniques presented. And remember, they are in the order that they are in on purpose. Don't work on higher level skills until you have mastered the previous ones. And just to go over them one more time, level one, watch your apoapsis and be ready to cut throttle when it reaches your desired altitude. Level two, 
Watch your time to apoapsis during your orbital insertion with the idea of keeping your apoapsis a little bit ahead of you as you complete your orbit. Level 3. Start your gravity turn early, usually not that much after clearing the launch tower. Level 4. Lock your vessel to the prograde vector during the majority of your ascent. And finally level 5, when your time to apoapsis hits about 45 seconds, reduce your throttle with the goal of keeping this time close to constant. And with that, I'm drawing this video to a close. I hope you found it useful and that I'll be seeing you again for the next one.